Personally, I think growing melons and cucumbers vertically is really beautiful. Um, and it also, I believe, really makes a ton of sense because if you think about how these melons and cucumbers work is that the main, the main leader that either comes up or even sprawls out along the ground usually has male flowers as it starts to go up. And then as the main leader starts to put out these different side shoots, it actually will be a, a female flower. So as the main leader grows, the side shoots continue to grow as well. And then you end up with the female flowers. So if you were to grow them vertically and cut off all the side shoots, like you could a tomato plant, as an example, you could cut off all of these suckers that form in the crotches of the branches. You would, in, in, a, in a sense, really be eliminating all of your fruit. You would not have any female flowers or very few female flowers, and you might be scratching your head thinking, why am I not seeing any fruits? Today is uh, July 17th here in the Philadelphia area, and I've been lucky that a lot of these melons actually have formed their melons. They've got pollinated quite some time ago. And these are all different varieties. You can see another one in there. There's another guy down there. What this means is that now that we've set these melons sometime in July, about 30 to 45 days later, you have a ripe melon. So I think it's absolutely critical that around this time of the year, at the latest, we should now be seeing some of these fruits, at least here in my climate, because we can time these fruits. We know after seeing them form here and they're pollinated and they're a success, like I said, it's 30 to 45 days. If we want to have a higher quality melon, we need to have these melons set early enough so that we can still have the heat required. And here's more, more varieties that I'm just zooming in on. Almost every plant has set melons, assuming they are healthy enough and have been established enough. Let's see, there's another one over there. And of course, they're, when they're grown vertically, they're hanging from the air. They're suspended in the air and there's nothing really supporting them. So some people have mixed feelings about that because some varieties of melons are slipskin. I'm sorry, slipskin is the wrong word. They're picked uh, either at half slip or full slip. And sometimes when they're really fully ripe, they'll just come right off the vine. And if they're going to come right off the vine like that, depending on the variety, then they're going to fall right to the ground and they're going to crash. They're going to hit the ground. They're going to probably open themselves up. And then therefore the more outside elements that gets on the inside, the faster it goes bad, the quicker it can spoil, the more the birds, animals, pests, critters are attracted to it. So that's one downside. But if you grow smaller varieties, you don't have to grow these really super five to 10 to 15, 20 pound melon varieties. You could easily grow, I think all of the melons I have decided to grow, there's about 20 different varieties here. They're all a smaller, a smaller melon. So they're all gonna be sub five pounds about. I have some that are pushing it. So that's one little solution. Um, and you can also attach yourself some pantyhose or figure out some sort of support so that you can support this melon while it is suspended in midair. And right before it's about to ripen or maybe potentially fall off the vine, it will be suspended and held up so that it doesn't crash to the ground. So in some sense, there's, there's more work to this. You know, it's not uh, as simple as growing them on the ground growing them on a hill, three plants to hill, giving them as much soil temperatures, planting them at the right time, starting the seeds, making sure that they're not 
root bound, you're transplanting them in, they're healthy, you're feeding them, you're giving them a lot of water early in the season. This is a little extra work. We have to train the main stems up the, up the poles of the tomato twine as I'm using. But the nice thing about these plants, it's not just the melons, but the cucumbers produce a huge amount of food. And not only that, but we tend to have really good airflow. I think my plants need a little bit of a pruning, maybe a little thinning out some of them, uh, especially the cucumbers, might be a little too close together, but so far on these melons, they've been very healthy. And I could very soon start to prune the bottoms, really prune the leaves down here to encourage more airflow to come upwards. And yeah, we have to prune them or allow them to go up these, these wires. It's a bit more often that you'd have to tie them around the wire or string them around, take the wire around the plant a bit more often than these tomatoes, but it's worth it. I think they produce a heck of a lot more fruit, especially if you pay attention to the, the things I just mentioned. You know, they're gonna form not on this main stem, they're gonna form on all of these side shoots. And basically almost every node for the most part, maybe every other node, is producing a side shoot. So if you count the number of leaves, every other leaf could potentially represent a fruit. Not that maybe you would want that many fruits. I mean, I'm sure if, if the plant could handle it, why not? But, you know, I think this is a really great way to get yourself a lot more light, a lot more production, better airflow. So far, I'm seeing really good success with this method. Just gotta keep these plants healthy and we'll be uh, really swimming in these melons. So that there, guys, is our little bit on the, little bit on the melons. We're gonna come at you guys very soon, I believe, because I have melons that should be ripe in the next week or so. So I'll come at you guys with reviews as we review these different very interesting tasty heirloom melons and there's some hybrids in here but i've chosen these 20 varieties for flavor so we're going to figure out which ones in this climate taste the best what really is the big deal is petite gris de rene the best is noir de carmes is there anything that can beat the petite gris is the cantaloupes the charente types really better than musk melons is there a musk melon is there a hybrid that could be a, an heirloom? So there's gonna be many, many questions. I can't wait to answer them and find out for myself. We'll see you guys soon, right? Stay tuned for all these melon videos to come.